Amen. Amen. I want to thank everybody for joining in. Um, this is Church of the Redeemed Family Worship Center. I'm uh, Pastor Greg Palmer. And we uh, every Thursday night at 7, we host a, uh, a discussion platform called Bible Talk. And uh, we invite several people. Tonight we are uh, going live via uh, Facebook uh, and YouTube. And uh, we're going to have several people on tonight from across uh, this beautiful uh, 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 country. Uh, and uh, tonight's discussion is going to be dual citizenship. Dual citizenship. And we're going to uh, just have a brief discussion about, um, you know, the ins and the outs of being a dual citizen. And when we talk about dual citizen, we're talking about here on earth. Uh, and and as uh, kingdom citizens, heaven. So uh, we're we you know excited about uh, having this discussion, and we pray and hope that you will uh, be blessed by what you hear on tonight. Um, trying to give a few more people an opportunity to log on. I'm doing like a dual platform, so I have. Um, two computers up and, and so if you see me looking back and forth that's what i'm doing god bless you leah how you doing i'm well how are you awesome 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 good uh, how's your brother uh he's stable stable uh, okay well yeah. we continue. we're praying yeah. we're praying for him and uh uh you know pray that he will get regain his strength and and um be a better version of himself. So right, correct. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How's the family doing? Everybody's doing well. Awesome. 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 We missed you this weekend. <laughs> I was talking to uh, your cousin uh Irvin. Um, you know, I was in Dallas last week and, and this week I'm in Myrtle Beach. Oh but, um, yeah. So um but but I was so um, uh, excited about coming on tonight. So uh, uh, I I didn't pass the reins on like I did last week, and I decided you know I'm gonna uh, talk tonight. I've been matter of fact when uh, Brother Irvin did his last week, I was actually preparing um, this particular topic. So we we're okay. excited about it, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys get something out of it. Okay. Irvin, you didn't tell me you did it last week. It was a surprise. Oh. surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was our surprise guest, our uh, guest speaker. Okay, and, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I have to send you the uh, the the video link so you can check out your cousin. Yeah, he did, he did awesome. I was very proud of him. Very proud of him. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm about to get you to do it one night. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> so I can get some, of that, get some of that wisdom out of you. <laughs> there we go. We got some more people joining. God bless you. Who just logged on? Is this How y'all doing today? Who's that? This is Kim. I was an invitee by Sheena. Oh, awesome. 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 Welcome. Welcome. Uh, you, I'm, I'm Pastor Greg Palmer, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, you'll be encouraged tonight on uh, uh, for the night's discussion. Oh, yeah. Feel I'm free. listening in on some past discussions, so, you know, I, I definitely love it. Oh, awesome. Great. I was about to give you the house rules, you know, let you know where the bathroom was <laughs> at and everything, and, you know, uh, you know, you're more than welcome to, to chime in. You're more than welcome to uh, share whatever God lays on your heart. And uh, we, we definitely don't, uh, you know, discourage people from, uh, you know, feeling free to talk. That's the whole point of Bible Talk, trying to get people to a place where you can have a discussion about God and not worry about being judged about what you what you do or do not know. Um, I think that the enemy uses that um, as a weapon to, to keep God's uh, people from from speaking. One of our uh, requirements of being a kingdom citizen, and we're going to be talking about that tonight, is being able to, to tell people about God, sharing 
you know, the good news, spreading the gospel. And so if the enemy can use intimidation, if the enemy can use fear to keep you from talking, if he can make you feel that, you know, or not have confidence in yourself, he can silence you. And in the process of him silencing you, uh, that word won't get out. And what I've learned over the years is um, th there's a word that God puts in your belly. And that word is specifically designed to help someone else get out of a situation. And so uh, for a long time, the enemy would use um, different things to keep me silent, different things to distract me so that I wouldn't be, you know, as vocal. Because one, one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to put ourselves out there and then someone calls us out. You know, we don't want to, you know, one minute we, we you know, well, as they call it, we're being, uh, uh, you know, holy art thou. And then someone reminds us, well, you know, I just saw you do something or I just heard you say something. So a lot of times, you know, we don't speak or we don't encourage or we don't share because we don't want that 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 correction uh, to come back on us. But I was sharing with someone today, God's children, real believers, real followers of Christ. We don't mind being corrected. We don't mind God, you know, uh, uh uh, putting us in our place to get us right because it's better to be corrected on this side than to be denied on the other side. So uh, I embrace it. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I challenge the enemy. Anytime somebody want to bring something about by what I did or used to do or whatever, hey, if that's all you got, then that means I'm doing good. <laughs> if all you got is what I used to do. <laughs> yeah, let me invite you to the party, man, so you can <laughs> so you can learn the new me. You know, the, the scripture says that when we come into Christ, we become what? New creatures. And so uh, that's one of the uh, things we're going to be talking about on tonight. One of the advantages of becoming a, a kingdom citizen, understanding your 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 legal rights as a kingdom citizen. God bless you, Delisha. Thank you for joining. Y'all, I'm so excited about tonight. Y'all, God is doing so many great things. And um, I... I I, I got to give him glory. I got to give him praise because uh, having a thought in your mind, you know, from years ago and then actually being able to witness uh, uh, it come into fruition and witness it actually, you know, uh, becoming real. Uh, I thank God that he, you know, he, he covered me in grace when I was in sin um, to the point where I can actually see him fulfill what he called me to do in my life. God bless you, Ursula. Uh, for joining on tonight as well. We're going to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome, awesome day, Lord God. We pray, God, that you were uh, uh, pleased with something that we said or that we did on today, Lord God. We we pray, God, that if we weren't as, as, as uh, 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 you know, instrumentals, we should have been, Lord God, that you would give us another chance on tomorrow, Lord God, to be a better version of who you called us to be. Lord God, I thank you right now, God, for your people that's joining on tonight, Lord God, whether it be through uh, this broadcast, whether it be through live uh, uh, YouTube, whether it be through Facebook. Lord God, we thank you for your people, Lord God, for having a desire to learn more about you. And I pray, God, that you will continue to put a, a hunger in them, Lord God, for you that can't be quenched, Lord God, with just, just a, a, a brief encounter. Lord God, I'm praying, Lord God, that we will desire a, a permanent encounter with you that you will be the one that governs us, that you would be the one that, that that teaches us, that you would be the one that guides us. In Jesus' name we pray uh, tonight. Amen. 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 So, people, 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 y'all, we're talking about dual citizenship. We're talking about dual citizenship. And so the first thing I want to ask you is, um, well, first thing I want to say is uh, a lot of times, when we we uh, hear kingdom citizen, I, I I really wonder do people know what that means? And so um, the Holy Spirit, I did this this teaching a couple of years ago uh, uh, when I was with uh, Apostle Donna Graham and Salvation Ministry, and we talked about the comparison, how the 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 process to become a natural citizen here on Earth has a lot of the same uh, 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 or familiar. Uh, uh, principles and, 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 you know, the process in itself, how those two things really, you know, kind of like, you know, 
parallel to each other. And so I wanted to, to bring it up again tonight because I'm praying for a, uh, a closer encounter with God. I'm praying for a, uh, a transformation within myself uh, to become more aware of, of my uh, citizenship, what, where my allegiance is. And so that's what we're going to be talking about tonight, our spiritual allegiance, um, our spiritual citizenship, what are our legal uh, rights are as a kingdom citizen? What are the things that God has promised us to be um, to be called his children? What comes with that? So I'm going to start tonight off with a question. And the question I have is, what is a citizen? Can anybody tell me what a citizen is? Don't be shy. What do you think it is? Go ahead, brother. Citizen is one that has legal rights. Uh, in whatever in the United States, maybe you, okay. a U.S. citizen. Okay. Okay. Awesome. 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 And that's exactly what it is. Um, that when you you know, as a U.S. citizen, there are certain rights that is guaranteed to you, whether it be through uh, the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, or whatever it is. There are certain things that you uh, are, are uh, presumed to to automatically, uh, you know, have access to. And of course, you know, you might have some to say, well, you know, uh, depending on who you are, depending on where you live, you know, those things may not be equal across the board. But the reality of it is, as a U.S. citizen, there are certain things that you are entitled to. And the same applies actually greater with being a kingdom citizen. Because uh, the, the only uh, requirement uh, 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 when it comes to uh, your access is how much access do you want? You know, uh, there's, there is no, no skin color for, for being a king of citizen. There is no gender specific re uh, requirement for being a kingdom citizen. Watch this. There isn't even a, a length of time uh, required to be a kingdom citizen. It requires, you know, a, a process of you, um, uh, you know, giving your life to Christ. And then because of that, these things are entitled to you. So we're going to be talking about that tonight. Uh, I want to read Philippians 3 and 20. Philippians 3 and 20. And this is when uh, uh, Paul was, uh, Christian, hold on a second. Alert's coming in. Uh, uh, the goal of life, talking about what the goal of life is. And in and, and, and Philippians 3 and 20, and it reads, uh, but we are different because our citizenship is in heaven. And from there, we eagerly await the coming of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so what that is telling us is that even though we are here on earth, you're here on earth, the flesh is here on earth, the flesh is a vehicle that transport the spirit right so because of that we are dual citizens we are citizens here on earth and because of our belief in jesus christ we are also citizens of heaven and there is a certain way that we're supposed to conduct ourselves there's a certain way that we're supposed to behave there's a certain uh, mindset that we're supposed to have as being a citizen of the kingdom. And so we're going to talk about that. Uh, first, I want to tell you what a kingdom is, and then we'll break this thing down. Y'all, I'm, I'm excited. So if, if, I start, if I start talking fast, somebody just tell me to slow down. <laughs> so a, a kingdom is a territory that is ruled or controlled by the king. Simple, right? So a kingdom citizen is a as as brother urban stated is a person who legally is entitled to all the uh the things that come under being that comes with being under the rule of this king so whatever is in his authority whatever's in his power whatever is in his uh, uh uh you know abilities because you are a citizen under his his authority you're entitled to it you know, 
when we think about kings, I don't want you to think about like King Richard and King Charles because there were certain things that, that the common people weren't weren't privy to, right? There were certain there's certain ways that you have to approach the king. I read somewhere where it was uh it was said that the the, the, the custom it was custom for when a king or a royalty would come in your presence, you would bow because you weren't worthy to look them in the face. That's the reason why you see a lot of the movies where people bow down to the ground because royalty is in your presence. Well, we give God the same reverence. We give God the same reverence, but because of Jesus Christ, we can have a one-on-one -on -one experience with the king, the king being God. And those of you that don't believe in, 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 uh, uh, in God the Father, Jesus the Son, and, and the Holy Spirit, I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm going to be the one to tell you that you need to read a little bit more. There is a trinity. There is a trinity. Unfortunately, some of us, you know, would like to believe is that Jesus was just like Buddha or what. But no, you know, Jesus was a <laughs> Jesus was the man. So so because of our sovereignty of his sovereignty and because of our allegiance um, to to kingdom, we are entitled we are we are privileged uh, to be called his children. So a country citizen is guaranteed certain rights as a member of the kingdom. Citizens of God's kingdom are unique because they possess dual nationality or dual citizen citizenship. So we're gonna break this thing down. Um, and I, when I did this class years ago, um, I was just marveled. You know, I was in, a, uh, in awe about the process of becoming a U.S. citizen. And I don't want to spend too much time focusing on that process. I'm going to share a few points with it. But my main focus is going to be on how if we have these particular requirements to become a U.S. citizen. Right. And it's, 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 it's strenuous. Thank God. Glory be to God that the process to become a U.S. citizen, question like a kingdom citizen, the initial process begins the minute that you accept Christ into your life. And then the, the development of the kingdom citizen is foregoing. It, it's not like, you know, with, with becoming a U.S. citizen, you know, you, you take the oath or you, you fill out the form and you do the background check and, 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 and then now you are a citizen forever. With being a kingdom citizen, yes, you are a citizen forever, but because you got work to do, right? Your development is continuous. It's continuous. And and and, and we you know we're gonna talk about what happens when you no longer desire to be a, a member of the kingdom. So in the in the US citizen pursuit. Uh, there is a process called naturalization. Naturalization. And that's a legal process or legal act by which a non-citizen uh, uh, requests permission to have access, to have the rights that uh, Minister Urban was talking about as a U.S. So I'm coming into this country, right? I'm a non-citizen. Um, and, 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 you know, my parents were born in another country. I'm coming into the United States. I want to be a United States citizen. Well, there is a process of naturalization where I have to go through several steps. And the process can take anywhere between 12 months alone, right? So the naturalization process of a U.S. citizen, the recipient will adopt the laws and the rules of the new country. And all rights of the country will be attached to the new citizenship. So, so uh, it's not like you got to go, you know, to the store and buy, you know, your First Amendment right, or you don't have to go to the, you know, to your Congress and say, hey, let me let me get some of that Fourth Amendment. No, these things are are entitled oppression. They are attached to your new allegiance, you know, your new alliance with your new country. That's the natural process. A person must, but see, with the natural process, you got to meet certain requirements. 
I'm not saying that you don't have to, say, uh, to meet requirements to be a kingdom citizen, but the requirements for naturalization as a U.S. citizen, you have to first qualify before you can even apply. You have to first qualify. You know, you have to be, I think, 18 or over. Uh, 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 you have to fill out this form, the N-400. You have to know history of the country. You know, all these different things. And then after you make it through all that, right, you got to take a test. You got to take a test. And then, then uh, the evaluation of that test, whoever's evaluating the test, they will determine whether or not you are then uh, given the opportunity to say that you're a U.S. citizen. Now, I, I, I get it. I get it. One of the main things that I love about that natural process is you have to basically give up something to get something. Let me say that again. You have to give up something to get something. In other words, I can't say um, I'm from Russia, right? And then I want to be a U.S. citizen, but I'm still loyal to Russia. At some point, there has to be a, a process of prioritizing your allegiance, even with being a dual a dual citizen, because that is possible. You have to be. Uh, there's a process where it's 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 evaluated. This someone has to say, okay. Is that even you know a good idea? Is is Greg going to be uh, uh, faithful to the United States, or is he going to the minute things get tough, the minute things get hard, he's going to revert back to being a citizen from Russia because he don't like the way things are in the United States. And so you 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 know if you're thinking about it in the spiritual sense. God bless you, Sister Martin, for joining. If you think about it in the spiritual sense, it's the same thing, but there's a different, um, there's a different, what's I'm looking for, weight to it, right? Because see, as a US, U.S. citizen, you're governed by the laws of the United States. As a kingdom citizen, you're governed by the authority and the rule of, 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 of and your sub, so submission, your relinquishing the authority that you have or you think you have over yourself, and you're telling God, I want you to be in control. So as long as, just like the United States, as long as you follow the rules of the United States, you're you're guaranteed protection, right? You're again But the minute you 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 don't, what do they do? They judge you. Sometimes they kill you, execute you. You can be, uh, 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 you know, uh, what's I'm looking for? You can be put out of the country. I can't think of the word right now. You could be imprisoned. You could be fined, all these different things. Why? Because you didn't do what I like. The beautiful thing about God is, as a kingdom citizen, you you know you will always be under either the will of God or the grace of God. In other words, you, you even when you're you're not as pleasing to God as He would want you to be, you're still covered by grace. You still have a chance to get it right. Because where you fail, where you uh, don't meet the mark, where you fall short, he, God, Jesus steps in and he covers your lack. So, so you, because you are a kingdom citizen, when we talked about being dual, there's a, there's a certain amount of grace you're given. We says my grace is sufficient, right? There, there's a certain amount of patience, a certain... The amount of love that you know it's it's not it's nothing that's nothing compares to it there's nothing that compares to it you know um and and, and this because there's two parts to the kingdom citizenship there's the time that you're here on earth you know as a visitor right and we and, that, and then, um we, we talked about that in philippians 3 and 20 that we're we're not citizens of this uh we are citizens of heaven so because there is a, a dual uh, process, you're covered even when you're when 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 you, 
you're you're not as uh, perfect as you want to be, or as perfect as you desire to be, or as perfect as others think you should be. There's only one person that can evict you from being uh, from heaven, and that's you. Because as long as you know, I love that you know when he said that that David was a man of his own heart. As long as you have a heart for God. And as long as you are continuously striving to to uh, to be uh, what God has called you to be, who God has called you to be, and do it, you will always be in the grace of God. Right? We know about David. David was a murderer. He was a, 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 a an adulterer. You know, he did all these did these bad things. But the Bible still said that he was what a man after God's own heart. So I'm I'm you know. As we are, 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 are travelers on this planet, it's up to you now, because I know that this is not my final resting place, right? So as I, you know, and as, and as I learn uh, to obey the laws of this land, my priority is obeying the laws of heaven. Because as you as you uh, adopt and as you change and as you transition to being a kingdom citizen, it'll help you be in compliance with the laws of this land. Now, I can't say that vice versa, because some of the things that you do in this land can contradict what God has called you to do as a kingdom citizen. So your priorities, your priorities need to be kingdom citizen first and then because you're a kingdom citizen because you obeying god because you loving your brother because you you know uh doing these uh whatever you know god has called you to do what the bible is telling you to do you're 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 patting yourself after the image of jesus you're patting yourself after the actions and the heart of jesus now you you will be in compliance with 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 natural law not the other way around. And I think that's what mess up a lot of people. We're trying to do it the other way around. You know, our priority is in uh, being comfortable here on earth. And I don't know why you would want to do that because the Bible tells me that heaven and earth is going to what? Pass away. Right? So as a kingdom citizen, once your once this body dies, once this flesh goes back to the dirt, now my soul spends eternity based off of my allegiance my turning my my soul uh the the resting place of my soul will be determined by my priority where i set my priorities that's why it's so important for you not to get so caught up on the laws of this land and then you forget what god what god says you need to be doing because when this land ends, when this world ends, when this world is no more, right? Everything you did here can affect where you spend eternity. Think about it. When you think about hierarchy, which is more important? What I do on earth, who I please on earth, what I pursue on earth, right? What my goals are on earth, or being obedient to God and submitting myself to the authority and the and the rule of God over my life. You know, think about it like that, right? So, spiritual naturalization. But well, before we go any further, anybody want to share so far? Awesome, awesome. That means you're learning and you're taking it in. So, spiritual naturalization. We talked about. Uh, the, the 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 physical uh, process of, na of becoming a uh, naturalized citizen. So now what we're talking about is the spiritual naturalization process. So we learn that the physical naturalization is the process by which a person pledges their allegiance to a country to be accepted as a citizen. Spiritual naturalization is a process by which a sinner denounces the desire to continue living a sinful life and therefore pledges allegiance to God and his sovereignty. Let me say that again. Spiritual naturalization is a process where you uh, uh, confess your sins. You, 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 you confess 
Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. You 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 give over the reins of of of, 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 of yourself, your control over yourself, and you tell God, I want you to be in control. I I want I want you to be my guide. I want you to be uh, my 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 compass, my my true north. And so now, because of that, I'm going to be uh, uh, taking on the character of God. I'm going to be learning the laws of God. I'm going to be learning, you know, the, the requirements and the responsibilities of being a believer, of being a Christian, right? I'm going to be believing that God is present in my life, that he is working, constantly working toward the things that's going to benefit me. That That's the difference. In the United States, as a United States citizen or a citizen of this world, or a citizen of a country in this world, you you, you know, you're kind of like on your own. You're on your own, you know, and, and, and whatever you do or don't do, you know, uh, that's on you. But as a kingdom citizen, and if you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit, your process or your development process is guided by the Holy Spirit. So you, as long as you're obedient to God, you're always in the right position. As long as I'm obedient to God, I'm always exactly where I need to be. So, so as the world gauges progress by what you possess, what you own, what you can buy, who you hang with, the house you live in, you know, that type of stuff, kingdom citizen is, is gauged by how much you submit to God, what you surrender. Because I'm going to take this the world of things and I'm going to sacrifice that for God to get the glory out of it. So, Lord, I thank you for the house. I thank you for the job. I thank you for the car. But how can I use this to glorify you here on earth? Because your, your function on earth, and we're only talking about uh, the requirements of being a kingdom citizen, your function on earth, like I stated before, is to spread the good news. The process here on earth is somewhat selfish, right? Because the majority of the people, like you don't see billionaires giving away their money for other people to become billionaires. You don't see, you know, thousandaires trying to, you know, uh, uh, bless other people with, with their money. Everybody kind of has this, the selfish mentality of I'm going to I'm going to do me. I'm going to help a little bit. But I can't let you have more than me because now the value of what I have is going to go down because you got more. But in kingdom citizenship, Lord, I thank you. In kingdom citizenship, the more you sacrifice, the more you give determines your wealth. Determines, uh, 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 you know, I wouldn't say your status, but it determines your position in kingdom. See the difference in the world of statue. The more I have, me, 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 gives me a certain value here on earth, right? What my net worth is, you know, uh, in kingdom, how I give. How I sacrifice for my brother, the love I give, the, when I take what God is giving me on the, on the earthly side and I'm sacrificing, I'm giving it, that's, that's determines where I spend eternity. What greater love than this than for a man to lay down his life for a friend. So the more I give, the more I sacrifice, the more I help others. Right, the bit, the 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 greater my my chance of becoming a permanent citizen in eternity with God. Y'all see the difference? Anybody want to share so far? Awesome. All oh, any questions? And I encourage those of you that are watching on Facebook or YouTube, um, you, if you could, you know put something in the comment section. We'll be glad to answer your questions as well. So, 
What are the steps of, of becoming kingdom citizen? What are the steps? All right, two, three, four, five. I have five that I want to uh, uh, use as key points. So the first one is you have to have a desire to want to be a kingdom citizen. You know that 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 means uh, it's not good enough for mama to want it for you, for daddy to want it for you. You got to want to be uh, with God. You got to want to be a kingdom citizen. You got to want to be a child of God. You got to want uh, to to spend eternity with God. That's the, that's a, a a personal thing, right? Denounce your allegiance to a sinful life. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Denouncing my desire, uh oh, to, to, to continue to sin. And, and that one gets a lot of people because we don't see the we don't see the the big picture, right? We get focused on where we are, what we can see what we can touch, feel, hear, right? The tangible things that uh, natural citizenship, kingdom uh, question, natural citizenship, earthly citizenship gives us. The, 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 the instant gratification of being able to go to the bank and you know and get a hundred dollars out of the bank or uh, go to a car lot and get a car or someone calls on the phone and offers you a job or you know, that, that, that's, that's different. That you know, those things are distractions. So number two is I'm going to denounce. I'm going to I'm going to uh, basically speak against my desire to sin. I don't want to sin anymore. Now, does that mean that you're going to be perfect overnight? No, it's a process still. But let, I'm going to start this process by showing that my allegiance is to who? To God. My allegiance is to God, and I submit and surrender myself to his authority over my life, right? You can't really say it about the, the United States government, because a lot of times, um, depending on who has the microphone, uh, they have you you know, going any which way, as the old people say, any which way, you know, depending on who, who has the most money when they can, and, you know, that's, that's normally who draws uh, the most attention but when it comes to kingdom there's only one person with the microphone there should be only one person speaking in your life there should be only one person that had that much influence over you to where you're doing you're thinking you're saying you're seeing you're believing and that should be jesus christ that should be god third thing accept jesus christ as your lord and savior Accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He's the, the, the Lord over my life. He's the He has rule and dominion over Greg. Right? And again, we're talking about the steps to become a kingdom citizen. You were already, you were born, if you were born in the United States, <laughs> you were born a U.S. citizen. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the process of, 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 of submitting ourselves, surrendering ourselves as, as sinners for God to, 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 to uh, assess what our debt is, right? Which is the, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is what? It's death. So Jesus Christ now becomes payment <laughs> for your sins. And that's what, and so, so because he's payment for your sins, that's why you have to accept. And see, until you accept him as Lord and Savior your, uh, uh, of your life, your debt's still yours. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Those uh, that, you know, that have been studying credit scores and, 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 and credit history, you can have, you know, you can have something on your credit for what I think it's seven years and just be the, little nitpicking at you right and then you know the creditors have got so smart they'll call you get you to 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 agree to some term or condition of payment and guess what happens now your seven years start back over 
But but with Jesus Christ, your debt is paid. It's paid in full. Right? Also, number four, we're supposed to promote our new allegiance to our family, our friends, and even our enemies. Even our enemies. What, what am I saying? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Lord, get them. That's, that's Vengeance is mine. What God is saying is, let me get that out of your, your possession. Let me get that out of your, your heart. Because if that having that type of malice in your heart, having that type of, 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 of evil in your heart could cause you to miss out on going back with God when he comes. So what he's saying is, give me that. Cast your cares and your burdens upon me. Take my yoke, because my yoke is lighter. My yoke has you focusing on how to love your enemy. My yoke will have you focusing on how to bless your enemy, how to, how to, how to show your enemy light. Because the Bible says that what? Let your light so shine that men may see it. He wasn't just talking about people you go to church with. He's talking about everybody that's going to be seeing what you do to include your enemies. Let them see the God in you as well. That's, that's what he's saying, right? Even though you have dual citizenship, your loyalty and allegiance to God should always be the guiding principle of your time here on earth. Don't, don't, don't be that one uh, 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 that, that's not ready when Jesus comes. When, you know, uh, you know, talk about the virgins, follow wise, follow foolish. Don't be in that, in that group of the foolish who are in a position, right? But because they chose to go back, because they chose to take their eyes off of the mark, because they chose to indulge and have a little bit of fun, or, or better yet, they chose to be complacent with their current situation, thinking that they had enough time. Don't be that person. I encourage you, I implore you, I beg of you. Don't, don't take this opportunity for granted to give your life to Christ. You don't know. No man knows the day or the hour that the Son of Man is going to. You don't know. You don't know. You know, two people laying in the bed. The scripture says, you know, uh, you wake up, your partner gone. There was a movie uh, about being left behind. Don't, don't be in that number. Don't be in that number because you, you, your allegiance is to the world. Your priority is to having fun. Your priority is to uh, 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 being, you know, the top dog here on earth. What profits a man to gain what? The whole world. The whole world and lose his soul. So that tells me that the soul is more valuable than anything that you can obtain here on earth. So, so here you have an opportunity to promote your soul, your soul transformation, your soul development, right? Versus neglecting your development, turning away from it, and now you're going to focus on earthly things, worldly things that the Bible tells us is going to going to uh, 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 be extinct anyway. Why would you do that? Your soul is eternity. That's forever. Your flesh is only here for a time. So why do we push so much focus on looking like, fitting in like everybody here on this earth? And, and because he said that you are chosen people, that don't mean that you're so special, right? Because uh, there's some that believe that he only was talking to the Jews when he said that. He was talking to the Jews and the Gentiles when salvation came in the picture. The believer and the non-believer. And there's some Jews who don't live to the fullest potential anyway. So that's why he says that uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only God. He died for everybody. Right? 
what are the benefits of being a kingdom citizen? Can anybody share with that? I don't want to be the one talking all night. Can anybody share what are the benefits that you can think of for being a kingdom citizen? Just give me one. Y'all talk to him. I don't want people to think I'm on here by myself. Eternal life. Sister Delisha. I was getting ready to say that. Eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. That's that's an awesome. That's 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 probably one of the best ones. It's probably one of the best ones. But there's some other things. There's some other things. There's some other benefits to being a kingdom citizen, right? As a kingdom citizen of God, your heart is under his lordship, meaning that you are now, you have now surrendered the responsibility of everything that concerns Ursula, everything that concerns Ms. Martin, everything that concerns Sheena, everything that concerns First Lady Palmer. You have given that over to God, and he is now in control. He is now his responsibility. And guess what, y'all? He don't miss a mark. He don't miss a beat. He's as old people say, he's always on time. If you think about it, there were times when God blessed you when you busy, uh, 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 you know, trying to solidify your your membership as a kingdom citizen, right? You're not even focused on on you. You're so busy being obedient to God, you know, when, when, when he gave Adam a wife, Adam wasn't sitting there, you know, writing in the sand, oh, I wish I had a wife. No, he was busy being obedient to what God called him to do, what God put for him to do. And because of his, his diligence, because of his uh, 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 obedience, God blessed him with the wife. And, and, and men, wives are a blessing. Just like pastors are a blessing to a church, wives are a blessing to a man. A blessing. I know sometimes you want to, you know, choke them, but <laughs> but they're a blessing. They are a blessing. Say it again, honey. Huh? <laughs> First Samuel 16 and 7 tells us that God doesn't see as man sees. God doesn't see as man sees. Man looks at the outer appearance, and God examines what? The heart. So, so, so being a kingdom citizen, that's a heart thing. It's not a, it's not a, a outer thing. It's not a how big your muscles are or how flat your stomach is or how long your, your hair is or you know, how long your limb. No, that's those things are distractions. What Samuel is saying here is that God is an examiner of the heart. So, so being a U.S. citizen focuses on, you know, your success rather is focused on or gauged by what people can see, touch, feel, hear when it comes to Greg. I can't tell y'all, I'm you know, I'm rich on here on earth and I'm the one standing at the corner with a cup and a sign, we'll work for food, right? But because of kingdom, God doesn't look at what I don't have. God doesn't look at how much money I got in the bank. God doesn't look at what groups I'm not a member of or what, what my social status is. He's looking at what? My heart. So yes, you might see me at the corner with that cup and a sign because I fell on hard times, but because I'm I'm his, because he's my my father, he's my Lord, he's my God. He he'll make sure I have everything I need. I know some might say, "Well, you trying to tell me God wants us to be homeless?" No, but sometimes the process of of of, of transitioning from a, a, a physical being to a spiritual being means God needs to see where our allegiance is. And yes, that means that you can be a, a, a born believer of Jesus Christ and still have and still go through hard times. Yes. How do we know that? 
we'll use Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. And he still went through a process of being whooped and, and, and prosecuted, falsely prosecuted at that. Publicly humiliated, right? They spat on him. They urinated on him. They made fun of him. Hung him on the cross. He's and he was God. He was God in the flesh. So your your hardship, what you're going through, that's just part of your process. I believe that your posture, how you how you handle that, determines or is a reflection of of of, of where God is in your life. Is He at the front or is He at the back? You know, I heard someone wrote a song that, you know, Jesus could have, excuse me, he could have called angels in his place. He, there were several times when he was being falsely uh, accused. He could have, he could have, you know, done stuff to them. Business is mine, says the Lord. He could have, he's, he's God. He, the, the, the God that split the Red Sea and then walked on dry land, that's Jesus in the flesh. He could have done that, but through his 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 example showed us that sometimes in order to be uh, 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 victorious in kingdom, you got to sacrifice convenience. You're gonna have to sacrifice preference. You're gonna have to sacrifice your desires. You're gonna have to sacrifice whatever your plans are because the priority of being kingdom sometimes puts you in a situation or puts you in the light of not looking as pretty but we talked about that so you know diamonds require you you know a process you know it goes from being a, a black dark thing cold thing until uh, uh the precision of the cuts determine you know the, the the clarity of the diamond you know uh you you love cake. You go, you know, cake tastes good. It looks good, right? But it's, it had to go through a process. Your kingdom alliance, your kingdom allegiance, your kingdom loyalty. I'm talking about you know uh, uh, God's kingdom. Says I don't care how the outer me looks because I want. To go back with God. As a you, as a citizen, the kingdom citizens, there's another one of the benefits. Your sins are forgiven. That's what Leah and Delisha, I mean Ursta was talking about, uh, Delisha and Ursta, about having eternal life. This is how you get eternal life. Because without Jesus Christ, without Jesus Christ, your 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 resting place. Is hell in the lake of fire, right? But because of you are U.S. I mean, you are a kingdom citizen. You all your sins have been blotted away. Jesus died for all those. So, uh, like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, if all people can talk about what Sheena used to do, what Delisha used to say, how 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 uh, uh, Mr. Irvin used to be. Y'all know, y'all know who he used to do, right? But if that's all they have, that means you're doing something right. As a kingdom citizen, you it's a daily uh, 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 process of, of surrendering to God. So eventually, what Brother Urban used to do, how he used to be, is just that used to. You 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 should not want to be a kingdom citizen, and people still see you the way you used to be. Why? Because you're still doing the things you used to do. You're still saying the things you used to say. You say you're a woman of God, but every time you go to church, you dress like you about to you know go to the strip club after this. Let your light so shine that men may see it. In other words. I want to be able to see the God in you. That's what's going. That's 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 what gets sinners to want to know God. You can't just become a citizen and just sit in one place. 
You can't just become a citizen and, and now you're safe. No, you got to get out there. You got you to gotta put yourself out there. One of, the, one of my biggest fears was getting in a conversation, telling somebody about God, and then they go, yeah, I hear what you're saying, bro, but, you know, just last night, you know, you was getting it, right? So to keep me from having the, the and I just say, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to argue the Bible. I don't want to, you know, to keep me from having to confront that, I would just stay silent. Why? Because I was enjoying my sin. I was enjoying the sinful nature. I was enjoying, you know, uh, uh, doing this and doing that. You know, and none of your business what I was doing. But I had fun doing it. Until I got to a place where I realized those things was, were distractions. It was keeping me from the benefits of being a kingdom citizen. As long as I was doing what the world wanted me to do, I couldn't enjoy the access that I was entitled to. Matter of fact, because I was so busy focused on the priorities of the world, I'm walking away from blessings. I'm cutting myself off from blessings, from peace, from joy, from happiness. Why? Because I'm too busy looking at that thing over there in that short skirt, right? Trying to see what that, trying to do with that. But what, guess what? Now I can't, I can't even see what God is doing for me over here because my mind is lost. I'm in the dark. That's why the club, when you go to the club, that's why it be dark in there. So, so we can feel comfortable in our sin. So we can feel comfortable with, with, with the things we're doing. Yeah, the preacher be up in the club too. Deacons, first ladies, missionaries. You want to know who in the club? Go in there and just turn the lights on by accident and see what happens. And see how they scatter like roaches. <laughs> Go ahead, Brother Irvin. Hey, told the truth, bro. Um, <laughs> You go, when they go to church on Sunday night, and to the club up on Sunday night. Yeah. You know, I, um, I was one of those guys that I played drums in church and couldn't wait until church was over with to go to the club. Yeah. To turn up. You know, so, but you you were speaking on freedom, you know. Um, and I was thinking about coming from another, from one citizenship to the other citizenship. Um, there's freedom. Um, you know, because just think about, of those that are in uh, Mexico, they were trying to cross the border so that they can have a, a life of freedom. Right. And most of the time, when they get over here in America, they have a, a life of freedom, and they're trying to get everybody over on this side. Right. They, they, they even get killed trying to come over here. They even right. uh, uh, put in jail, or uh, whatever it takes for them to get over here. They, they're going through a uh, 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 chaos to just get into a, a, a new place in life. Right. Uh, and just like us, you know, we were, we, we, was, we, was, we was in captivity, as I said uh, uh, last week, but we were seeking redemption. Uh, and as we were seeking redemption, you know, we were seeking a new life, but sometimes Satan have us so blinded that we don't understand the freedom that, we're, that, that we need in our lives. So, um, and, and so we want we want to come from the old so that we can walk in the new, so they can walk in the freedom of life. Right. And, and, and you're right, man. Uh, uh, they they want that they want that new life. The Bible tells us that when you become, uh, uh, and that was one of the other things that uh, as as a, as a one of the benefits of being a kingdom citizen is you become a new entity, a new creature, a new person, you know, uh, and, and, and that, but that's, that's a trans, that's a mind transition type thing, transformation type thing. So, so, so some might say, well, you said we're a new creature, but I still live in the same old raggedy house. Yeah. But because I'm a new creature now, I understand that it could have been worse. I could have been homeless. Right. Or, 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 or I could have been in prison. Kingdom citizenship comes with a new mentality. 
whenever uh, uh, you know uh, they they cross over the border, that's what they're seeking. They're seeking a new, a new whatever, a new opportunity, new chance, a new a new look at life, right? And then, unfortunately, they get over here and realize that, that that sometimes they experience more prejudice over here than they did where they came from. So, so when we're talking about kingdom citizenship, there's a peace that comes with it. That my situation is still what it is, but I can see joy in it. My situation is still what it is, but I can see purpose in it. I understand it. My situation is still what it is, but 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 I'm growing from it. You know, you know, a uh, 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 a writer once wrote, you know, it takes dirt for a plant to grow, and sometimes depending on the process, you know, what what the way a seed has to to develop, it basically the seed rots. The contents of the of, of, the, of what's in the sea is exposed and 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 the new earth or the earth when it when it comes out of that that atmosphere when it comes out of that environment is transformed into something else i i don't care how how uh sweet an apple is eat an apple seed and see how it tastes <laughs> it don't taste good but you if you put it in the dirt and you allow it to go through its maturation process and you nurture it, you'll get experience the sweetness of its produce. And that's what God is trying to call us to. Because of the sins of Adam, right? We, we were born into sin. So he sent Jesus Christ to redeem us and to give us an opportunity at new life. And, the, and, the, and all we have to do is to denounce our desire to sin. You know, that's, we gotta we gotta open our hearts to Jesus and let Him, you know, uh, 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 clean us up, develop us, mold us. Okay, it should never be taken for granted that we are only here for a short time. This is my conclusion, and all have spent eternity. All have to spend eternity somewhere. In other words, when you leave this world, you're going somewhere. There are those that don't believe that, that there's a heaven and a hell. I feel for you to be the when you get there and find out that there is. And I told someone the worst, the worst thing that can happen if there is no heaven, and I live a fulfilled life on earth. But if to, to, to get there and find out that there is a hell. And you missed out on heaven. Because every man will be what? Rewarded for his works. After the natural body dies and your allegiance to this world is no longer relevant, your soul will be judged. And your allegiance as a kingdom citizen will be analyzed for loyalty to the rules and regulations set forth by God. Don't let, don't let your, your time here on earth cause you to miss out on eternity with God. I'm not telling you not to get a car. I'm not telling you not to go to work. I'm not telling you not to want things. But long, don't let that become your God. Don't let that become the thing that keeps you uh, disconnected from God. So when it's time to go to judgment, when it's time for redemption, or I mean, uh, uh, the resurrection, you know, all you got is your car. <laughs> Yeah, you got a nice house. <laughs> you sure got a lot of money to pay. But you're going to hell. <laughs> don't, don't be that person. Don't be that person. That's all I have, people. That's all I have. Anybody want to share? I want to thank you all for joining us on tonight. Uh, we pray that God will continue to bless you. We pray that uh, those that will be listening to this broadcast later on, that uh, the anointing of the word of God, of the Holy Spirit, uh, will, will be on this word and you will get a double portion. I pray that as you go forth and, and understanding 
and studying. That's why I attached the scriptures what a kingdom citizen is, that you will start trying to pattern yourself to be more and more like God wants you to be, that you will, will begin to see that your, your, your priorities were off. God's giving you a chance through grace to realign yourself, to, to reposition yourself, right? So if you haven't uh, uh, accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do that. Find you a good church. Find you a man or woman of God that, that, that has a heart for God and, 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 and ask them to, to connect you to uh, that experience. You know, uh, Jesus is uh, an authentic experience with Jesus is like uh, a crack. Once you get it, man, that, ooh, you, you, you'll, be, you'll be feeling for it. So I'm praying for you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your support. To the Church of the Redeemed Family Worship Center. Again, on behalf of my wife and I, we want to invite you all to uh, to fellowship with us on the first and third Sundays at 210 Church Street in Georgetown, South Carolina, which is the conference room for the Georgetown and the Suites. We have our church app, uh, cash app on uh, Church of the Redeemed One, Church of the Redeemed, and the number one. Um, if you want to uh, sow a seed, into the ministry. Uh, if not, just continue to pray that God will have dominion and authority over my life. That I will continue to be the man that he's called me to be. God bless you. That's all I got, people. Let's, let somebody want to share. All right. All right. God bless. You going to close out in prayer? Sir? You going to close out in prayer? Yes, sir. Um, would you pray for my um my dad? He the Dallas earlier today. He went okay. uh he was the down he came in, so he let, wanted me to let you know that um that's the reason why he missed. So keep okay. him in prayer. Okay, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you now, Lord God. We say thank you, Lord God, for being our ruler. Thank you for being our king. Lord God, as we learn to be more and more submissive to the thought that you have over our life, Lord God, we ask God that you would give us the courage, give us the, 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 the desire, give us the hunger for you, Lord God, that we will be the people that you've called us to be. So much, Lord God, but that we know how to surrender to you. We know how to acknowledge you in all things concerning us. Right now, God, I pray for uh, those that are sick. I uh, pray for uh, my cousin, Lauren that you will strengthen his body. We pray right now, God, that you will encourage his spirit, Lord God. Lord God, that you would give him a, 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 a hunger for you as he is going through his process of, of, of being uh, uh, rebuilt, revitalized. Lord God, we ask God that you would just give him a hunger for you, Lord God, that he will not only come out of this situation a better person, a better human, Lord God, but as a better kingdom citizen as well. Lord God, I pray right now, God, that you touch uh, 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 pa uh, Pastor Brown, as he's going through his process, Lord God, strengthen him, Lord God, encourage him, Lord God, Lord God, you have the authority and ability. Your word says that we are healed because of, of what Jesus went through on the cross. So, Lord God, we submit and surrender to you, Lord God, that everything that you uh, uh, that we go through, Lord God, you are either allow it or you ordain it. And so we pray now, God, that you would give uh, the man of God uh, the courage and the confidence, Lord God, to stay strong. We realize, Lord God, that sometimes how things look, how things feel can, can weigh us down, Lord God, can tax our spirit. So right now, God, we pray that the spirit of joy, the spirit of peace, the spirit of prosperity, Lord God, attack him right now, Lord God, take him over, that he will continue to be strong, that he will continue to be faithful, that he will continue to be committed to what you've called him to do. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God. Anyone that's listening to right now, God, those that haven't even acknowledged what they're going through, Lord God, we pray right now, God, that you would touch their bodies, that you would touch their hearts, that you would touch their minds, Lord God, that you would give them a, a strength, Lord God, to, to, to withstand whatever the enemy is throwing at them, Lord God. We understand that there is no weapon created to destroy us because you are our Lord. You are our, our, our God. You are our creator. And we thank you right now, God. We call it so. It is so in the name of Jesus. It is so in the name of Jesus. You are victorious. 
You have already uh, obtained the victory. All we have to do is submit and surrender to you and walk in that victory. And Lord God, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen.